Yes, indeed. Welcome back. This is the touchline with me, Bernardo Kumen, as earlier promised. <coughs> We're getting into the second, rather well, first segment for the interview. And what else? I'm blessed to have the communication director from the Boxing Federation of Kenya. That's Duncan Sugar Ray Kuria. Karibu sana, Duncan. Yes, indeed. You know, and um, you, you stuck with the name Sugar. It must have been good <laughs> when you were active those days, right? Yeah, I used to float like a butterfly and sting <laughs> like a <laughs> wing. <laughs> Yes, you, 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 you hung your gloves early? Yes, I hung earlier because of other things, professional work. Mm -hmm. But I was, yeah, I, I rested earlier by more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so it's, it's a, it, you, you did, um, you really uh, leave a good trail, you know, you still manage the sport that uh, gave you what you have, you know, the communication director serving in that role for years now, you know, it must, it must it should be interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, I understand the sport mm -hmm. fully, in all aspects of the sport. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier for me also now to tell the world mm -hmm. the stories about boxing mm -hmm. from across the world. And also, it's much easier when I'm communicating with the boxers because mm -hmm. we understand each other, I understand everything they go through. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to give them advice on how to win fights from time to time. Mm -hmm. And I also document everything that they do. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier for them now than it was for our time because mm -hmm. our time we didn't have videos and all that. Only newspaper cuttings. Yeah, only newspaper cuttings and, and they're old. And if you never made it yeah, to so the papers. It's a big difference <laughs> when you're seeing pictures and when you're seeing videos. Yes, yes. So because from videos you can learn a lot mm -hmm. uh, on, how, on areas on which you can, how you can improve your, your game. Mm -hmm. So I believe now they are in a much better position than we were in the past. Mm -hmm. And I believe also the sport is also changing very fast mm -hmm. because much earlier, even the scoring was very different from, in, from what it is now. Mm -hmm. So now things, I think, have gone more digital mm -hmm. than those days when it was more manual. Yeah. And, and so I, I think there's a great chance for the ones who are here now to perform very well. Yeah, and m maybe when you're documenting it, because now you, you, you just took it upon yourself, but you, you're serving the... Uh, when I enter the public in yes. the public office, right? Yes. yes. W I mean, uh, will it remain? W will it? Will you set up that particular office, and maybe whoever comes af uh, after you will still do the same, continue what you've been doing, documenting, and like a, a museum for for BFK? Ideally, I think that should be the right thing to do mm -hmm. because we need to document what we've been doing all these years. And I believe it will form a very good foundation mm -hmm. for those who will come after us. Mm -hmm. They are able to find structures that are working mm -hmm. and maybe even improve on those structures mm -hmm. as time goes by. Mm -hmm. So I believe uh, when the other, the other guys will be coming behind us, mm -hmm. they'll find something that is very operational and will be very meaningful to them mm -hmm. to be able to pick up from there and improve in further. Yes, indeed. Uh, just in a nutshell, that's what uh, Sugar is all about at BFK, documenting uh, the Kenyan, bo uh, Kenyan boxers, wherever they are locally and also whenever they're going for international championships. Last year was a good year for, for Kenyan boxers, you know, a uh, flash of brilliance from a number of boxers who showed that they, they did that they're in uh, for, they can cause an upset on the global stage. You're talking about maybe some of the major uh, events include the World Championship where Bonfess Mugun and David Karanja really did good, uh, give account of themselves and also not forgetting Frieza Nyango, though she faced a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you remember that? Uh, yeah. It was uh, an amazing year, mm -hmm. and I believe uh, our boxers did very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember the case you're talking about where Frieza Nyango fought uh, against Imane Khalif of yes. Algeria, yes. who had been, during the championship, mm -hmm. Imane was disqualified because IBA did some DNA tests, and they say that, uh, <laughs> no, this is, this is difficult. Yeah. She is a man. She has more testosterone or something like that. Yeah. It's something similar to what we have in athletics with the case of Semenya mm -hmm. and some, a few, a few of our girls also. Mm -hmm. So it's something, it was very new in boxing. It was the first time it was uh, happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, we happened to have been victims yeah. of the process they because, the because they could not reverse the, the decisions. And uh, the lady was uh, allowed, okay, now lady, because mm -hmm. later they said it's a man. Yeah. Uh, she progressed all the way to the finals. Yeah. And uh, it's when now the roster for the final came out that we discovered she had been disqualified. And uh, the person she defeated in the semifinal from Thailand was going to take place, uh, to take part in the finals. So it was a very unfortunate, the way, in the manner in which also the matter was handled was very unfortunate because there was no formal communication never, to tell us to what happened this. and uh, what will be our recourse because mm -hmm. we felt to be victimized by the situation mm -hmm. because I don't understand how a person who had failed a DNA test mm -hmm. was allowed to compete in the tournament, up getting up to the final, 
And then now, her, because we lost to her and it was unfair, being that they're saying now it's a man, mm -hmm. why did they allow a girl to fight with a man? Mm -hmm. So it was not fair how the whole thing happened. Yeah. But it's uh, some of those unfortunate things that happen sometimes in the sport and we don't have a recourse for review or appeal. Mm. So you just have to live with what it is, no matter how negative it might be. But uh, generally, I think uh, our boxers gave very good account of themselves. The likes of Bonifus Mugunde mm -hmm. getting up to quarterfinals, the World Championship, uh, fighting against some of the top boxers in the world. Also, David Karanja did very well, uh, both in the World Championship and also in the Africa Championship, which happened in uh, Yaounde, Cameroon. So I believe uh, we have a very good crop of young boxers who are very promising, and I believe if they continue training with their coaches and uh, they get more time to work and correct some of the mistakes that they've been doing, mm -hmm. they're going to gain very good experience to be able to, uh, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against some of the top boxers in the world. And that way, we are going to regain the, la the past glory of our country in boxing, mm -hmm. where we used to be among the top four nations in the world. Yes, indeed. And of course, some of the efforts being done is uh, maybe the one week or it was two weeks of training in, in Cuba. What, what lies ahead now this year? Uh, this year, I'm hoping we are going to be able to also continue preparing our teams. Mm -hmm. Although at the moment, I don't know of any plans to take our our boxers up to the country for training, camping. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe the experience that we got in Cuba was of very massive help to us. And uh, I believe the ex that experience itself will be able to put our boxers in very good stand when they are competing against some of our, our fellow competitors, especially from Africa continent. And also when you go to the world stage where we are fighting against the big boys, mm -hmm. It gives us a uh, very good uh, standing to be able to compete against the best of the best because we were there with all those world champions, Olympic champions, and we are doing sparring with them, training with them every other day. And we, we just got the vibe, mm -hmm. the Cuban vibe mm -hmm. of fighting, mm -hmm. which was very good. And if you see, if you watch Boniface Mugunde at the moment or David Karanja, mm -hmm. they are trying to put into practice what they learned there, and they have really improved in their matches. Mm -hmm. You find, bo like Boniface Mugunde, hardly any of the, our boxers now is able to finish three rounds with him. Mm -hmm. He's knocking them out mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And that shows you that he's working so hard himself, and he has a very good attitude. And when he was there, he was, he was just there to learn, mm -hmm. trying to observe what is it that these Cubans are doing. What is it that makes them so special to be able to win? And uh, I believe that is the kind of culture that we also need to nurture with our young guys here so that... Uh, as they become of age, just like what uh, our Waziri for sports was saying, mm -hmm. you know, we have our young guys who are coming up so that we are able to give them a chance to be competing at a very young age so that uh, when we have the issue of transition, mm -hmm. you know, the likes of Mugunde are going out. We have yeah. others who are equally as good coming I mean to now. take their places because yeah. if you don't build that depth now, then in future it's going to hurt us because a time will come when, uh, for instance, the like of Nico Koth mm -hmm. had to... We will leave the space yes. because of age. Mm -hmm. And we need to have young boxers come in to take their space. Mm -hmm. And they must be competitive enough to be able to win medal like Nick was winning. Mm -hmm. So unless you work with the youth and junior structure, mm -hmm. you are going to struggle to do the transition mm -hmm. because you, do, you hardly have depth. Yes. And we, you know, like in the past, we see that uh, the administration used to focus mainly with those who are the national team and you don't uh, focus mainly with what has been at the grassroots, mm -hmm. that where the talent is produced. Mm -hmm. So you find when uh, the guys at the top are fighting up their late, maybe late 30s, uh, when you need to transit because the, max, the age limit is 40. Mm -hmm. So when you get to 39, then you cannot be able to compete in the other tournament. Mm -hmm. So at that time, you are having to replace somebody and you don't, the person who is coming is very far off in yeah. terms of experience. It's not known either. Yeah, yeah it's not known. So, and when you are going to fight again in some of these top boxers, then you must have some experience to be able to yeah. go to with them toe to toe. Yes, indeed. And of course, good jobs of being done by um, former boxers, Nika Baka in Kariobangi North, as well as uh, bon, uh, Gisharu, Benson, uh, Benson Gisharu yeah. uh, in Mokoro, you know. Fight for life. Yes, fight for life and trying to bring up uh, boxers to. You know, that's the depth that we're talking about. But let's talk about the Olympic qualifiers. We did, uh, Kenya did not have um, the direct uh, qualification. Is there yeah. another chance for, for, for our boxers to go through to the Olympics? Yes, we, have, uh, we still have uh, two chances. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the first qualifier was the Africa, champion, the Africa Olympic qualifier, which happened in Dakar, mm -hmm. Senegal, mm -hmm. where the, we didn't get uh, 
a qualifier mm -hmm. though we had a boxer that fought up to the final and won a silver medal mm -hmm. in Elizabeth and Diego mm -hmm. uh, but the quarters for Africa were very challenging because mm -hmm. it was only the gold medalist mm -hmm. that was qualifying mm -hmm. and like last time where mm -hmm. we were qualifying up to the bronze medal mm -hmm. this time it's only the gold medal. Has medalist. IBA and Olympic settled it? No they haven't so it's a bit uh, of a challenge mm -hmm. because uh, at the moment uh, International Olympic Committee uh, removed IBA yes. from the Olympic family. Yes. So at the moment, the boxing at the Olympic uh, will be uh, the, there's a Paris boxing unit yes. which is going to take charge of the boxing, boxing. as a sport uh -huh. at the Olympic level. Uh -huh. IBA will not be involved, mm -hmm. and it's the second time that is happening because yes. also in Tokyo it, it was uh, the same case. There was a task force uh -huh. that was formed to take charge of boxing. Uh -huh. So it's very unfortunate uh, situation where the IBA and the IOC. Not Why is it so hard the recommendations to be taken into, uh, in, into, the, into place and so that the ratification may happen, uh, I things think to be done in order? There was a challenge. There's a challenge between the two organizations. Yes. And there are several issues that uh, IOC had uh, pinpointed that needed to be corrected in IBA. Yes. So it's a ping pong because IBA now say that they, had, they corrected all those things that they were told and they have done much more than they did. Uh -huh. There are issues to do with the result system, the manipulation. There are issues to do with the uh, integrity in terms of finances. Uh -huh. So those issues, uh -huh. according to the IOC, have not been corrected. Mm -hmm. According to IBA, they say they have corrected. So there's a disagreement between the two organizations. Mm -hmm. And it's hurting the sport because now, it's the in when it comes even to the Olympic qualifier, uh -huh. it is the IOC Paris boxing unit that's taking charge of that. Uh -huh. uh, we have to one qualifier. The next qualifier is going to be happening in... Uh, uh, Busto Arsuzio in Italy uh -huh. in the month of February, uh, uh, end of February, from 29th February to 10th yes. of March. And then immediately from there we go for the Africa Games, mm -hmm. which will be in Accra, Ghana. Yes. After that we go to, in the month of May, we have uh, again now the second and last Olympic qualifier, mm -hmm. which will be happening in Bangkok, Thailand. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are hoping when we go to those two qualifiers, mm -hmm. we at least we we'll be able to get some boxers to qualify for the Paris Olympic Games, yes. which will be happening in July. Yes. So after that, then we also have our local league, which we'll yes, be running talk about that. Yes, yes. So we are hoping that uh, our boxers are going to be busy basically the whole year. Yes. Because our last tournament, is going, the league tournament will end in the month of December. 20 from 19th to 21st mm -hmm. that's when we are going to complete our calendar so and it has started today where we are having the national novices final mm -hmm. happening right now as mm -hmm. i speak here mm -hmm. the finals of the national novices are happening at the green park hall mm -hmm. uh, in whole park yes so we are hoping it's a whole calendar where we all activities are catered for and we are hoping to have a very successful year yes indeed uh, maybe as we wind up your last thought on the, the august uh, youth national team trials yeah, we are going to have, uh, basically we've been having a challenge mm -hmm. because uh, the school calendar was hugely affected by the COVID pandemic. Yes. But now it's now getting to normalize. So we are hoping every time that the schools close, we are going to have a championship. Mm -hmm. But in the month of uh, August, we are going to have a selection for youth and junior mm -hmm. so that we are able to select a national team mm -hmm. which will be able to present us in the World Youth and Junior Championship to be happening in uh, Croatia mm -hmm. in the month of November. Mm -hmm. So the August trials, which we have not set the specific date, we need to consult with the education calendar mm -hmm. so that we don't uh, inhibit those who, are, who will be going to school. Mm -hmm. So in the month of August, we are going to announce the exact date when the trials will be happening. Mm -hmm. But uh, the objective of the trials will be to select a team to represent the country in the Youth World Championship which will be happening in Croatia in the month of November. No, but that's uh, Duncan Kuria, Duncan Sugare Kuria. Thank you so much, Duncan, for making time on Touchline Y254 and a great update on what lies ahead of the boxing calendar. Of course, key events happening. Of Kenyan boxers still have a chance to go to the Olympics, so they should keep their heads up and uh, their chin up. And also good news about uh, the development of uh, Bonfus Mugunda and David Karanja as far as uh, bolstering their skills is concerned. So we must say, or should, we should say that those those are the medal hopefuls. Of course, there are other interesting talents that did come through last year, including Frieza Nyango, Emily Juma, Pauline Chege, and Amina Mata. All that, but we'll be having second time for you. Always welcome. Thank you so much, Duncan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. Let's take a short break with uh, this uh, particular action from uh, the AFCON, and I'll be coming back with Sad Musa, a former FC Leopards player who'll be here talking about his journey as the national team south sudan national team player and where next after announcing his departure from ingwe keep watching touchline